Hello everyone, it's Amy, and welcome back for another Journaling on a Budget, starting from scratch. Today we're going to talk storage, because I find that if your items are a little bit neater and easier to get to, they're easier to use, and you won't, you know, say, oh, I wanted to put that there, but never mind, because I got to dig for it, or I don't know where I put it. Um, and so it's just so much more pleasant to craft if your items are just easy to get to. When I started this, um, I went ahead and I put a little um, container here in the front of a big box to hold my little bits. And then I had this big box that was tall enough to hold my papers. And I thought, well, this is going to work. Two things I find with storage. Number one, your storage shouldn't be taller than whatever you're going to store in that area because all of these little bits that are stored here, when I first started out, when I went to get my stuff out, all of this was piled on top of here like that and I couldn't get to it if I wanted to. Um, and so it was like, so I started kind of straightening it up and I thought, no, I need to do some better storage. If I was going to keep this box, what I would do is I have my taller things lined up in the back there so that's okay to have the box that tall but then here in the front I would just start here and cut down at an angle right down to the level of this right here so that I couldn't pile things on top of here they would fall off that's the whole point I don't want to pile a lot of stuff on top of all my little bits then I have this container that I got to dye paper with and these two books right here they go right there. But can you see how having things in front of those taller items is making it hard to get those books in there? Because I also have stuff piled on top. So the other rule is try and make your storage only as deep as whatever you're storing. So if this had stopped right here, I couldn't stack a bunch of stuff in front of it if that was the end of my storage right along the edge of the papers so that I could slide things in and out because I wouldn't have a bunch of stuff piled in front. And those are kind of my two rules of storage is make it hard for yourself to just pile stuff on top. Now, you're going to do it anyways, but don't make it easy for yourself, like having this great big tall box where I can pile a whole lot of stuff in there and it's not going to fall off. And make it so that you can't, you don't have room to stack a bunch of stuff in front of what you have. So, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to make some storage because I have to get a little bit of a handle on this. We're just getting started and I'm starting to get lots of parts and pieces that we're making that I'm going to need to store. And um, so I'm going to show you how the types of storage that I'm going to make and different ways that you can make storage that you think will work for you. So I'm going to be back in just a second and we'll get started. Okay, I'm back. And um, so I have a lot of this kind of already done up so that th this isn't going to take forever because it's already going to be a long video. But what I have here is when I went to the Dollar Tree, and I can't even tell you how long ago, it's been like a year ago, um, they were unboxing things and they had these boxes and they were just starting to like break them down. And this was the size. It was just kind of a nice size because, like I said, I like a smaller storage so that I don't have room to pile extra things in. And I liked the size. I didn't know what I was going to do with it. I mean, I knew that I was probably going to use it for storage, but I wasn't sure what. And so I picked these up a long time ago. And they have been sitting in the back of my van um, for like a year. My husband keeps going, what are you going to do with those boxes? I'm going to do something with them someday. But anyway, so I have this whole stack of boxes. Now, the nice thing is that they're all the same size. So that makes it a little bit easier with some of the cutting bits, but really not that much. Um, but I liked the size of this box. And I just, they were unpacking them. They were breaking them down. And I said, can I have some of those? So I took a few of them that weren't already, um, you know, like flattened out. And then I just took a stack of them that were flattened out. And um, they were happy to get rid of them. And I was happy to get them. So um, these are the boxes that we're going to use. You can use any box you can get your hands on. And like I said, and the Dollar Tree seems to a lot of times have some small boxes. They seem to get things in boxes that are a little bit smaller. So I always like to look there. And at our Dollar Tree, it seems like they're always unpacking things. So they, they usually have some there. 
Um, but so let's see. So to start with, um, one of my favorite things to do is for, how do I want to say this? Small, tall things. I'm not going to worry about that right now. Um, like journaling cards and that type of thing that we're making. And I want to stand them up, but I don't want a huge amount of room because I'm not going to make a huge amount of them. Um, this is the way that I like to make the storage for that type of thing. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to shut this box up just to kind of give it a little sturdiness with those flaps in there. And um, there's no rhyme or reason. I'm going to cut it right along this line right here just because it'll give me a straight line. And that's going to be how far from the bottom. So the front's going to be three inches tall. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to line my ruler up with that line. I don't have to make any marks because I've got that line on there. And then I'm just going to take my razor knife and very carefully and don't cut towards yourself always make sure that you cut at an angle so if you slip you're not gonna run into yourself you're gonna just go off to your side so I'm gonna line that up and then I'm just going to cut the box right across here okay that's cut all the way through come over here and just do that and then what I'm going to do is let me fold this in so you can see where I'm going to okay we cut it right here now I'm going to cut from here right up to the corner of this box just like that so then I'll have a nice angled angled box I'm going to just go and line it up just like that hold it so it doesn't slip and then again, just cut. Keep your fingers out of the way. You know, wherever there's bits of tape and stuff, it might be a little hard to cut through. Sometimes I peel those all off. Sometimes I leave them there, thinking that eh, probably makes the box just a little bit stronger. Now this is the side where my box has folded together, where they've glued it together like that and so this part right here is going to be just a little bit harder to cut through because there's two layers of cardboard so I'm just going to just work at it carefully and there we go I mean, I'm going to do the same thing on the other side and I'm just going to go from where I cut it right here up to the top corner Now, this is what we're left with for this part. And so what I usually, just to make that top stronger, um, I'm just going to put a little bit of glue on here and fold it back and then go set it on the counter with something heavy on it and um, let that, and let the glue dry. Now, I did find out, um, because this wants to just keep popping up, you know, it, it's pretty, um, it doesn't want to stay down very well and in this case I do take the tape off um, you don't the, the glue doesn't want to stick to the tape very well so you want to get a nice glue on there and then put that on there set something heavy on it this is what it's going to look like when when we're done with it we're going to use it like this um, but I was trying to find something heavy to put on it and I had an empty milk jug there that I had rinsed out but hadn't put in the recycle yet I filled it up with water because they say that a gallon of milk is eight pounds um, so I set a gallon of milk or a gallon of water on there and let it dry overnight and it worked really really well so and then what I I was looking at this piece here um, and I thought hmm so I was I was looking at that this is what we just cut off of our box it's missing this front flap because that's what we left on here to make it sturdy so um but I thought well I think I'm gonna use that so what I did was I glued the flaps down here and here like that and I just glued those to that back flap and then I let them set with a nice heavy um, dictionary on there 
and let that glue dry. And I'm actually going to make this one later. I'm going to set it aside right now because I have them with the glue dried, and that's why I've got a lot of it ready. It will save time, and we don't have to wait for the glue to dry. So here is our first one, and we've got this nice and glued down on the back. And then here was the top section that went right on there. There's the top part of the box that we cut off. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to cut this extra bit off. And at first I thought, oh, maybe I should have just left that flap on here and I could have made, but I don't want a bigger box because I'm going to show you what we're going to do with it. So I'm just going to decide how I want to cut it. And I think, are my scissors going to work okay? No, I'm going to go ahead and cut it with a razor. Get a piece of cardboard to put underneath of it. Set that one aside. And you're not going to be able to see, but I'm going to cut it just right straight up there. Make sure you keep your hands out of the way. And I'm just going to cut it along that bottom flap. There we go. And then we're going to do this side here. And again, you're not going to be able to see it, but I'm just cutting right straight up there. everything but the tape there we go making sure you keep your hands out of the way okay So now this is where we glued it together, and that's what it looks like. And when I glued this together, when I pushed my sides in just a little bit, and I'm still going to have to squish it because this is the same box, so it's exactly the same size. But I'm going to try and squish it right in the front here, just like that. And it fit nice because I had really pulled those sides in, including like where the fold was. I kind of gave it just a little bit of a squish. So see how the fold is squished backwards like this a little bit? And I'm going to slide this right in the front. And so now I have an area that I can put like taller journaling cards or tags or, or even I might put my scissors. I'm going to have two of these. I'm going to have one for paper, little bits, and one for things like my glue. And I want to do something in the back to hold like my scissors. Well, this is going to have to be in the front um, because I don't want to lose things. Another rule of storage is don't store things where you have to reach way down into a little tiny spot to get them out um, because they'll get lost. You'll even forget that they're there. So you want to make sure that your container to hold them leaves at least just a little bit stick out the top. But like my ruler can go in there and my scissors can go in there. And also when I cut um, when I cut cardboard boxes, a lot of times I just use a serrated knife from my kitchen. And then yes, I just wash it and put it back in my kitchen. And you know, I don't cut boxes that have poison in them. So um, I wouldn't want to use a box like that anyways. So I don't have to worry about that. Anyway, so there is one nice quick way to make storage and that works great. Now another way to make storage is shelves. I really like shelves. And so... I have cut a bunch of strips of cardboard here, and these strips of cardboard are about the width of um, the flaps here. So, but, but what you're going to do is, I've already glued the other side, and then you're going to um, need to glue this side down, and before, before I glued, 
I cut the front of the box on both sides right down to here, right to there. Um, just so that it would be easier to, because I want this box to be solid. I want to cut the face off, but in order to make it more solid, it's easier to glue the box together first and really get those glued down well and let them dry really well um, before you take the face off so that, so that the whole box is solid. So what I do is I just cut along the edge and leave just a little bit that I'll have to go in and cut at the very end, and then I'll have to cut it off. And then I go ahead and glue that, set a heavy book on it, put this in here, and um, and glue that and put a heavy book on it and let it sit overnight. Now, I am going to cheat. I'm going to just go ahead and I'm going to tape this shut um, because I want to be able to continue on and show you how to go. So I'm going to tape this right now, and if you have tape, by all means feel free to use it but also um do take a little bit of your glue even if you're going to tape it because glue holds better whenever you're making storage it's better to at least use a little bit of glue um and and let it really dry put something heavy on it so it makes really good contact and and let it dry and you're going to have much sturdier storage that way so I'm going to do this and I'm going to put some tape on it and just just like if I had let it sit overnight and let it glue itself shut. Um, but, and actually, um, because I was able to put a heavy book inside of there, I'm not so sure how well of contact if, if, if these don't, you know, I don't have any way to like really push those up against here. So I think at this point, now that I have the bottom done, I'll go ahead and cut the front off and then I would set this down. I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm, this is gonna be the front of my box, so I wanna cut this front piece off and I'm gonna do that right now. Okay, see, and then this this is another reason that I do like to do my box together um, before I get it too taken apart. I'm going to hold that down. Okay. Just open that up. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go set this on my counter, and I'm going to set a heavy book on here, and I'm going to let that dry. And then I'll come back and cut the front off and everything. And um, But I really want that to dry. So I'll be back in just a second. Whoops. Okay, so here is the box. I finished just, I just cut across the top. And of course, if I hadn't used the serrated knife, um, if I had used my razor knife, I wouldn't have all of these on here. But I'll just go in with my scissors and just trim that up when it's all dry and everything. But we've got our glue under here, but see how that's lifting up? So we want our glue to stick down. I am gonna cut this flap off later, but you don't have to. If you wanna be able to close this up, you can leave this flap on here, put a button on this side with a piece of string on it, put a button on the top with a piece of string on it, and then just take this and roll it around there you know, to keep it closed, and that will keep everything contained. And then when you want, just unroll your string, let the top come down, and you'll be able to get to the shelves that we're going to put in here. But while that, see, that's that's popping up, and I don't want it to pop up, so I'm just going to take my nice heavy book, which these are my favorite drying books. I have three of them, Volume 1, Volume 2, and Volume 1. Um, I don't know how I wound up with with the extra one, but I did, and I love them. And so I'm going to set that aside and let that dry. Next one. Um, this one is already ready to go, but I'm going to just show you how to do it so easily. All right, so all I did was I just took the box and cut this piece off here. And so I just wound up with a box like that. Now that just gives me a little extra stability um, because I want to put my papers in my books. I want them a little bit separated. And so... I just went ahead and I just cut the top off and one side off of two cereal boxes and I did use some tape to tape the front together here but you don't have to do that um, 
Papa was watching, and sometimes, you know, Papa has decisions that you have to make that sturdier by putting a piece of tape on there. So I have to do it. It's just easier. But there we go. Literally, that is just like the type that you buy at the store, except that there's no little front piece on it here. I did leave the front in here to start with. Um, this wasn't big enough to hold my papers widthwise and to hold my books widthwise. So I had to cut the front off. But that's okay because I really prefer to be able to slide things just straight in and out. And so now I'm going to put my books on one side. And actually, I think the books are going on the little side. And then my papers will be going on this side. And that will be all of my tall papers. I showed you, you know, like how I make a folder to hold my papers. Is just take a cereal box, open it up, cut the top and the bottom off. And then I fold it inside out so that I've got the nicer side on the outside and that is my folder to hold my paper so this one is my paper bits and that one will just slide in there just like that or if I want to because these are paper bits I may want to put this one in and I know the shadows are really terrible but working with this large stuff it's very hard to not have them but so I can just slide this one in you know this way so that my papers are going up and down instead of um, falling out the bottom you could also tape together you know tape the bottom together if you want to do it this way just put some tape across the bottom so that it it doesn't open at the bottom so that this is solid and then it just kind of opens like this and you know you can slide your little bits in there so that is a good way to Again, have your storage for um, your papers and your books and your things that are big and tall. And, you know, this is not super heavy. By the time I get everything in here, I don't think I will have any kind of a problem. But if it wants to tip over because I just put two heavy books on one side and papers aren't quite as heavy as books are, I can just go ahead and put a book on each side. But at least it gives me some place to store these things where I can just get to them easily you know, when I'm looking at them face on at my desk, you know, this is what they look like. And I can say, oh, I want that book, or I want that book, or I want that set of papers. And I'll probably maybe put some tabs on here. Maybe not. I know what's in them. But if you wanted, you could put a tab on your um, little folder so that you knew that this one was paper bits and the other one was, you know, coffee dyed paper or tea dyed paper or whatever. So there is, there's the way that I'm going to store my stand up bits. And then the final thing is going to be drawers and I will be right back in just a second or shelves. I'll be right back to show you that in just a second. Okay, I am back and my little flaps are pretty dry and normally I would let them sit overnight, but I did it a little quicker today for the sake of getting the video done. But I did go ahead and I just cut along the fold line there to cut this piece off. And I trimmed off those little shaggy bits on the edge. I just took my scissors and just cut along um, the edge right there to get those off. And then this is this piece right here we're going to use to make a shelf inside of our box. Now we need to make the shelf just a little bit smaller. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut off these frilly edges just barely and um, that should make it um, the, the right size to fit in our box. I'll do one side first and then check it and see if I need to take anything off the other side. So I'm going to look at, this one has the most shaggy bits on it so I'm going to cut this side off first and like I said just barely cut off the edge like that and I'm going to check it and it's still just a little bit tight so I can cut off just a little bit of this edge over here and it's a little folded because that's kind of where it went around the corner. But I just barely want to take any of that off. And I still haven't broken my knife yet. I need to do that take my scissors and just straighten that up a little bit just 
just like that. Now let's see how it fits. Okay, now if it's kind of tight, but not, it's not going to make my box bow. And so that's going to be good for one of my shelves. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my shelf, I'm going to put it in here, and then I'm just going to grab a pen or something. It's a little too tight to fit to the bottom. So put it in there, make sure that you get all the way to the back, and then just mark it right where the edge of the cardboard is on this side and on this side. So I have a mark on both sides. I know where I'll need to cut it. Just line up my ruler. And cut it. And now I have a shelf. And actually, this shelf does have a correct right and wrong way because if you look here, I'm right out to the edge very nicely. But when you put it, when I put it in this way, this side sticking out a little bit, and this side is a little bit too short. So my box sides are a little bit different. It doesn't matter. But now the thing is, is that to put in a shelf, the way that I like to put in a shelf is you want something for the shelf to sit on. You don't want to, um, like, just put the shelf in there and try and glue it or something. You want it to be able to sit on something. So we need a support for it to sit on. And so what I did was I just cut... I just took one of those boxes, left it folded up, and I cut a whole bunch of pieces um, that are, let's see how wide are they? They're two and a half inches wide. So that's going to make my, my there's gonna be three compartments, and that's gonna make them about the same. The top compartment will be a little bit bigger. I could have done eighths of an inches and all that, but I didn't want to. But what I want to do is I'm going to take a piece of this, and I'm gonna make it fit in here, just like that, to hold up my shelf. And so, the first thing I want to do is say my shelf is pretty much as wide as the whole thing. I forgot about that. And so I'm just going to cut the front off this box. And do the same over here. I'm just cutting off this front flap so I have the two sides in the back. Now, if I didn't have another box that was exactly the same size, I would just cut a long strip and then just score it where I needed it to fold. Now, this is not going to fit anyways because it's the same size. So I'm going to have to still, I'm going to have to fold this in just a bit. And so I'm going to fold it in like one width of the corrugation. You know, they have all the little corrugated lines in here. I'm going to do the same on this side. And it will make it so that I need to cut a little bit more off the front, but let's see if that fits. And that fits. So now that fits in there like that. And that's not a very big lip, only one width of the cardboard. So I'm going to do another one so that we have two widths of the cardboard for, I'm just gonna cut the front off. And this one I'm actually just cutting a little shorter right from the start. Now this one I'm going to fold two widths of the cor of the little corrugated lines. So I'm going to fold that just a little bit more because I want it to fit inside the one I already put in there, which now it's a little bit smaller. And is that going to fit? Yes, it is. So there we go. Now instead of only having one width of cardboard for our shelf to sit on, we have two widths of cardboard for our shelf to sit on. And now we will put our shelf, let's see which way does it go, not that way, 
So we will put our shelf in here and our shelf will sit on those. And the and you don't wanna just like put a couple on the side and a couple on the other side because um, you want that across the back also. That gives your shelf a lot more stability. That's why you need to go down the side, across the back, and up the other side. You now have stability on three sides of your shelf. And if you're gonna wind up putting something heavy in there, this just really helps. If you're going to put something quite heavy in there right now this piece of cardboard the corrugation runs this way if I was going to if I thought I was going to put some really heavy stuff in here I would cut another shelf just like this and I would make the corrugation run this way so that you've got once one of your ones runs this way one of them runs this way and then just glue those two shelves together and then that will make it even more sturdy and so now what I what I would do is I'm just going to cut another one just the same just cut the front off and cut the front off of here fold it in just one bit of corrugation and then fold this one like that and then this one will fit right in there and do another one just like it just cutting the front off the box because the box is the same size otherwise what you would do is you would just measure how deep is your box, how wide is your box, and then how deep is your box. Just add those three amounts together and cut a strip of cardboard that long. Okay, just put this one back in here. Let's fold this one with a couple of lines of corrugation. cut another shelf to fit right there and then you will have three compartments. Let's see, do I have another one that I can... Okay. I was going to use this one, but it's already got some ripped off of here. It's not sturdy enough to use that one. So I'll go ahead and I'll just, let's see here. Let me just cut off the edge of the box here. here because it still had the fold on it and now I don't need to cut off this side because that one is already I cut this one too small and you know what it's not going to work well so I'm not going to use it because it's just it's just too small if you can see it's not hardly sitting on the supports at all um, on this side so let's try will it fit this way yes it will fit this way so I'm just barely going to cut it off right along the fold line there oops that's not going to work and that should make it the right size because you definitely want it sitting on those supports I yep, need to take off just a little bit more. And remember, work in little amounts. Because you can't put it back once you cut it off. There, now it fits all the way side to side and it's completely sitting on those supports on each side. And then what I'm gonna do is just mark it right there 
and mark it right there. And we will cut this one off right here. Okay, now this corrugation runs this way. And on this one, it ran this way. So like I was saying, in order to make a sturdier shelf, you could cut one where the corrugation runs the opposite way and put them together like that. And that is going to make that shelf much sturdier. I don't think I'm going to need it. I don't think I'll be able to put anything in there that's that heavy. And like I said, if you have the support across the back, without the support across the back, even a sturdy shelf is going to sag in the middle. By having that sturdiness across the back, it's being held all the way across the back and both sides. So to sag in the middle, it can really only sag in the front because the back is being held up with your supports. And so that's why you need that U-shaped support. And now what I will do is, you know, I have this all, all completely done for, you know, for what I'm making. And I am going to cut off these little bits of the edges here you know, because I don't need those sticking out. And then I'm going to take these supports and I'm going to glue them together on both sides and in the back and put them under a book. And I'm going to do that with the supports. And then once the supports are dry, then I am going to um, put them in here and I will glue, I will glue the supports to the sides on both sides and um, in, in the back, and then this will be ready to go. So, um, I don't forget what I was just gonna say. So, but I'm gonna go ahead and I will glue those supports together, and um, I'll trim them down, and then I will glue them together, and the glue itself also makes those supports sturdier. But, so there is our shelf. So now we have a shelf to use. And this box in itself, I'm pretty sure this box is bigger at the top than the bottom. In looking at it, that one's one, two, eight and three eighths. And there it's just eight, so it is. It's wider at the bottom than the top. So you know what I do? I just go ahead and I'll just use it this way. Now, I'll have to take my supports and move my supports down because the supports have to be under the shelves. Move this one down to the middle. And you don't need a support at the top, but you can put a support at the top if you think you're gonna be setting things on top of your box. Um, but you do have, you know, it's glued at the sides, it's glued at the back, so the top does have its own bit of support anyways. So there, I'm gonna do it this way, so it's wider at the bottom than it is at the top. And then we will have a shelf and I wanted to show you I have one done here I have these little containers that they're like ramen noodles from the Dollar Tree and on Tuesdays when I do my videos and Papa doesn't come for lunch um, I go ahead and I have ramen noodles because I can't have salt when Papa's here so um, that gives me a day of salt and so those were really cute and I thought well look they fit in there really nicely. So now, not only do I have shelves, but I also could have little drawers. And so I'm gonna have some drawers, and then when I get that one done, I'll have some shelves. And then we have the one that we made like this, and we have the one for our paper. And I think that this might be pretty good. Now the only thing is, I am gonna to wanna to maybe put something um, in here, and I think what I might put in there is this because that will hold, um, you know, like pencils or anything that you have that's tall, and it will hold it so that it doesn't fall over. Now, this one, yeah, that one could probably go in there, but I like things to stick out the top just a little bit so that you're able to just grab them. Um, if they go down inside, it's too hard to get them out, and it's too hard to find them, but this is another thing that I like. And I, so I have a ton of those tins because I save them because I think they're cute and I like tins. But so what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish the other box and I'm going to transfer everything from that big old mess into these boxes and see how it works. And I'll be back to show you in just a minute. 
Okay, I did want to show you this really quick because I told you I was going to glue it and set it under a heavy book. And I got to thinking because of the way that these are, you know, when you unfold them, see, they're going to be like that because they're not actually the same size. And so the way that I decided then to glue it is I just am going to put a little bit of glue on the back, the side, the side. And then just kind of hold these in a little bit so that the glue doesn't rub all the way down. And then just put that in there like that. Do the same with this one. And it doesn't have to be a ton, ton of glue. You just need something just to hold it there in place. And to hold these from flipping in all the time, which will drive you crazy. Well, it drives me crazy. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I have these, these are chip clips um, I made a long time ago for a craft fair. Surprisingly, they sold because um, I didn't have any chip clips. And so I just sold some of these out of my kitchen drawer. And I'm going to use those to hold it. Now, if you have the regular chip clips, you can use those. If you don't have any kind of clips at all, um, then you can just take a piece of your tape and um, and just put a piece of tape across there until it dries. But there we go. I'm going to leave it like that and give that glue a chance to dry. You could also, if you want to, take something that would fit that's heavy and just kind of sit it there, um, you know, to hold the back to hold the back down. But I wanted to just show you that because I told you I was going to lay them under a heavy book. And actually, you can't do that. So I didn't want you to try and have it not work and think, well, what went wrong? So there we go. There is our shelf. We will let that one dry. So now I have shelves. And I have one with kind of like little drawers in it by using these. And um, I'll be back after these are all full. Okay, I am back, and um, there's one more piece of storage that I'm going to show you how to make, and that is how to make your own spool for your um, fibers or, you know, anything that you might have, Some if you get a big roll of twine or something. I find that, like, yarn-type fibers, I have a hard time, number one, finding the end, and number two, keeping them from getting all tangled up. So I always like to put them on a reel, and I put a little slit in the reel so that I can take my end and put it through that slit, and then I always know where the end is at. And I'm just going to show you how to make these. They're very quick, quite easy. The only thing you have is drying time. Um, but the first thing I did was I took a paper towel roll, and I just cut it in half. And um, then I folded it down. God bless you. Um, and then I went ahead and cut it, and that was just because I don't want to have a, my spool, like, base, inside base, to be this big around, because it just takes up so much room. So I like to just make them a little bit smaller. And the only reason that I cut it is just so that I can get a straight line, but you don't really have to have a straight line, so you can just cut it anywhere if you want, then you don't wind up with the fold in there. Um, and then what I do is I just glue it and either find something to tie a piece of the fiber around it at each end and in the middle just to hold it or depending, you know, just go ahead and just, you know, hold it and roll it until it gets nice and sturdy and then put it somewhere to dry well before, um, before you go ahead and use it. But and you do just the only thing is you want to do make sure, like I just had that and I was like off on an angle, you want to make sure when you glue it that you keep both ends nice and even. Before you glue it, easiest thing to do, I, I go ahead and I draw a line across it about a half an inch and that's, that's where we're going to make our little tabs at. But it's easier to draw that line while it's nice and flat. Just set it down, draw a line on each end, and then roll it up and glue it, making sure that both ends are even and letting that dry. Then what you're going to do is I have just two pieces of, um, this is a pancake box mix, and so I just have two pieces of cardboard that I just um, drew around a pill bottle and um, cut them out and glued them together. Now, the the one that I have, not this one, but my I have two of these already done, 
and my top popped off. And it popped off, I'm sure, partly because, number one, I didn't wait long enough. I didn't let it dry overnight when I did it. And number two, um, because this is shiny. And shiny doesn't glue as well. Um, so what you want to do is just once you get it, if you don't have any sandpaper, which I didn't get any for my for this series, so I just took my scissors and I just scratched all, all the way around the edges of this to scrape some of that off to give it a little bit of texture for the glue to stick to. And so just go ahead and do that so that now you're a little bit down under that shiny, shiny paper and then make sure you let it set overnight. I have one here that's already glued. It's got the line drawn on it on each end, if you can see that here and here. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna take my scissors and just cut about every half an inch or so right to that line. And you will have parts where it's thicker, where you have it rolled upon itself. And when I get to gluing it, I'm going to separate those. Whoops, I went too far on that one. And these ones I made a little thinner. It really doesn't matter. You just don't want them too big because you want them to be able to fold in. And then what you're going to do is you're going to fold right on that line. And the reason that you want the line there to give you a place to cut to and a place to fold is because, um, and actually I'm doing that wrong, I fold these out. So you just need to make sure that your circle is big enough so that these don't stick out around the edge of your circle. And the thing is, is that you need it that big anyways. The bigger your circle, the more area that you have here to wrap your twines. So if you have a whole lot of, or a big bundle of yarn, or a big bundle of twine, just make your circle bigger. Your base can be exactly the same, but the bigger the circle, the more you can wrap and, and hold on that one spine. And so I do that, and then where they where it was doubled over, I fold those in. And I just figure, you know, that's just a little something to glue there and to glue there. And so it gives a little bit extra. Oh, that's Papa. So we're going to do that. Oops, and that one is glued together really well, so it's not going to come apart. But I'll just take those second bits that will fold in and fold them in. And then we're just going to really quickly put some glue on here. Sure you get it all over and I just do both sides at the same time like that and then make sure that you take your sanded edge and just place it on there centering it and I just hold it down put the other one on there like that now it's a little bit crooked either because of the way I cut the roll, because of the way I cut the little tabs or whatever. I'm just gonna just make sure it makes good contact. If it's a little bit crooked, this one seems to be a little shorter here than here, which is making it crooked. That's okay. So the biggest thing is I just kinda wanna make sure that on both sides that I have it centered. because that makes it better to roll with. If one side is way smaller than the other, you can only roll it on there until you get to the edge of the smaller side. So just give them all a good press, and then what I do is I just take it and hold it there, and then just take a coffee cup, because there's some weight to it, and I have to show you this because I think it's really cute. This came from my craft outlet, and it says, 
I like long romantic walks down every aisle at the craft outlet. And I just thought that, thought that was so cute I had to buy it. I don't normally buy cups like that. Okay, now my bottom one got moved a little bit, so I'm going to get that back in the center. Hold that just like that, and then I'm just going to take the cup and sit it on there upside down. Now, because mine is a little bit crooked, um, my cup might want to fall over. So then what you're going to do is you're just going to take a couple of heavy things and just put them around. just to hold it up so that it doesn't fall over. I need to put the top on my glue. And then you're just gonna let that sit and dry. Best to do it overnight. So I'm gonna put this one aside and let it dry overnight. I'll be back in just a second after I get pop up and, um, and I'll show you what it all looks like. Okay, I'm back and here are all of my boxes and all of my crafty items. Um, you know spread out the way that I want them now so I did go ahead and on this top shelf because I set the box on top of it I had not put any supports here I only put supports here to hold this shelf up but then I put in two supports here to basically hold up that top um, so because it's going to be holding a little bit of weight up there otherwise if I wasn't going to set anything on top of it you wouldn't need it so I did that on both of them I went ahead and I put two two supports. Well, that one's folded, but uh, here you can see that there's two supports on each side to hold that top up to hold the weight of what we have up here. So, and then here I just put some of my taller items in the back, and I just got a little plastic cup to hold all of my markers and that type of thing and my water glue. And then um, I wanted to keep that box that has some finished tags and stuff in it that we'll be working on. I put my fabric there, some lace. These are just my Walmart bags. This was, uh, Grandpa broke the bottom of his butter dish, so he gave me this. And so in here, I'm just collecting little whatnots. I am collecting, um, what do you call it? Uh, bread ties, because there's wire in there. And we may need wire for something. And so I went ahead and I'm collecting those. I put my, oh, and I have my napkins on, the, on that shelf also. Here on the bottom, I just have my ribbon, so I kind of have my fabric-y stuff in this one. And then over here, the henna art I thought would fit inside the box, but it won't. It's just a little bit too big, so I just set that underneath. And then here, I just have a paint palette with paints and sponges. And then here is my sewing kit, tape, button maker, and the little stencil. And then this one is, oh, the only thing in there is that's the spring off of the book that I took apart, the, the kid's book with the uh, stencils in them. And so, and then here I just have my twine. I stuck this box in here, which has my little cutouts. I may leave that there, or I may take that out so I could put all three of my fibers on that shelf. And then I just have the paint there. And then um, our vellum cards and our little holder, and then this was just what we took the paints out of that I kept. And then here are all of my papers, and I did just wanna show you, um, I had bought a couple pair of pants, and they came on these hangers, and so I kept them. I haven't taken them apart yet, because I'm not sure that I might not wanna hang this up somewhere and let something hang from it. Um, but also, if you want, you could cut them off right here and then just use them as clips. They're nice, sturdy clips. So like when we clip that together with the, with the chip clips, we could have used these. So remember to, when you get things and you're thinking about throwing it away, think about what you may need it for. Now, if we're gonna do something where we want it to hang and dry, this would work great to just hang it over. Like I have a, a chandelier lamp right here that I can hang that on, and then it could just hang up above me there and, and I could clip things on there to dry. So that's why I haven't taken it off yet because I think I may need to use it that way, you never know. And then also I wanted to just show you one other little um, folder that I have here of things that I've kept, and that is just um, envelopes. And I like the ones with just the really big um, picture in it, but this came out of the Whitman's box and I just peeled off the other side of plastic and it has this really great texture. And so, and then this is just a piece of paper they had a lot of blank paper on there. So, and the thing is, in the um, 
the window envelopes have different patterns inside them so those are kind of cool too because you can color them um, you know with your watercolor like make watercolor paper out of them if I get a really nice piece of cardboard I keep that and this is just again the inside of an envelope this was a really nice piece of cardboard because it's um, you know uh, craft color on both sides I just tossed that in there these were some little um, packaging bits that you might want to make cards out of and then the rest of the thank you note that we already used for Papa's thing I liked this because it had these circles in here that I figured I could trace Papa was throwing this away it came with something from the VFW and um, and it has just a little bit of sticky notes on there but and then it has all of this nice blue paper so Papa asked me if I wanted that because he was going to throw that away and then Oh, this is just a piece of paper that came out of um, the paper that we bought, the banner paper. But the back side is all blank, so I kept that. And then this was the cover to the kids' book. And this is a hard plastic, and so I kept that. So those are just some of the things that, you know, and, and it's really not... Don't look for what everybody else has. You know, when I first started, it was like everybody's using time cards. I needed to get some time cards. They were using playing cards. I needed more playing cards. And so... Don't look at what everybody else has. The reason they're using time cards is because it's a heavy piece of cardboard, not because it's a time card. The reason they're using a playing card, it's a heavy piece of cardboard. So, you know, it's like you may find some playing cards that you actually want to use. You might want the numbers on them or something. But don't think that because everybody else is using these certain things, you know, receipts, um, you know, the little receipts from the... Um, like when you go to a restaurant or something and they give you the they write out the they write your order out and then give it to you as a receipt. You don't necessarily need those things. The whole point of a junk journal is people were using just junk they had laying around the house. Well then when people started using time cards, then everybody started buying time cards. That defeats the purpose of a junk journal. You don't have to go out and buy all of those different things so that you have them. Now, you know, somebody might put together a kit sometime. I do that sometimes. I'll put together a kit with you know, like a few time cards or a few playing cards or, you know, a few of all these different little things. And they are fun to play with, but to go out and buy a whole bunch of them, you know, it's like, what are you going to do with a whole bunch of them? So, you know, so just remember, it's really about as you bring things into the house and you're getting ready to throw them away, can you use that in your book? And so, anyways, I do hope that you enjoyed this video. And I think that the storage turned out well. This is going to be so much better for me. Um, I'll be happy with this. So at least for now. And the thing is, remember, when you build your storage and you think, oh, I don't have, it's not filled up yet. Don't worry about that. You're going to fill it up. So don't try and fill it up right away because then what happens is you start collecting more things or getting more things, you're going to have to make more storage. So don't worry about it. If your storage isn't completely full, it's going to get there. So thank you very much for watching. I really do appreciate it, and I hope that you all have an outstanding day. Bye-bye.